Welcome. In the last video, we talked about arithmetic operators, and you might have noticed that we were separating all the math that we did uh, with integers from the math that we did with floating numbers. So that might have led you wondering, do we have to separate integer math and floating math? And the short answer to that is no. So let's take a look at that, and let's get started. So to show this, let's have something simple. Let me just clear some of this stuff up. Let's say 5.0 by plus 3.5. Oh, I took the plus. Right? So 5.0 plus 3.5, right? So these are both floating numbers. There's a fractional part, and, you know, here's a floating result. But what if you just wanted to say 5? Because 5 and 5.0, they're identical. You don't, you should, I mean, you're, you're probably wondering, why do I have to put 0 0.0? So now here we have an integer. And now we're adding to a float. Now, there are two key components here when we're doing this kinds of mixing of data types. And the first one is the data type where we store the result. So in this case, we have a float variable where we will store the result of 5 plus 3.5. And the second thing is the two data types that are being used with the operator. So in this case, we have an integer and a float. Now, there is a rule of how certain data types are convert it internally when you do these kinds of uh, mixing of operators. And we call this a uh, promotion. So in this case, the number 5 will be promoted to become a floating number. In other words, this 5 internally, without you looking, without it telling you, will become 5.0. And the reason for that is because a 5 it can be, as we said earlier, it can be converted to a floating number without losing any information, right? 5 and 5.0 are exactly the same. You do not lose anything by deleting the point 0. However, if we were to change the float into an integer, that would mean we would have to get rid of the point 5. And of course, now we have lost some value, and this answer will no longer be correct, as you would think that is doing 5 plus 3.5 when it indeed is not. It would be 8, right? So the moment that you mix an integer with a floating number, it would automatically convert the 5 into a float to make sure that they're both the same data type. Now, then I said the second thing would be the, the, the variable in which this is saved. What happened if this was an int? If this was an int, you have a floating result, right? So this is, this is 5 plus 3.5, that's 8.5. But int... Uh, but results can only take an integer, and 8.5 is not an integer. So something happens when you are trying to assign a float to an integer, okay? So first, let's see what happens. Let me keep this back as a float, right? And so now let's just show that indeed the result is 8.5, that we're not losing any information. Here you go, 8.5, right? So... It doesn't matter which operation you decide to do. It can be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The moment that you mix a floating number with an integer, that moment, the integer becomes a float. Now, if I have something like this, oops, let's say I have something like this, right? Now, these are, these are two operations, operation number one, operation number two, right? So what is going to happen is you're going to add 3.5. This is integer addition, right? So nothing happens. They both remain integers. They, they will not get converted to floats just because this one gets converted to float. They only get converted at the moment that they're being used in the operation. So this would be 3 plus 5, 8, integer 8. And then you'll have integer 8 plus 3.5. And this time it says, oh, this 8 has to be promoted to a float. And therefore, it would be 8.0, saving the result. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens when we do something like this. Now, in order to do that, I, will, I want to use it with a particular case that even I have made mistakes in the past, and it, I think it haunts every programmer at least once in their lifetime. But let's see. Let's say I have something like, uh, well, let's just use the same thing. Let's just say that I have int result, right? And I'm going to use division. Now, what happens if I do something like this, right? Well, 4 divided by 2, right? This is an integer. This is an integer. So the result is going to be an integer. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2 is also an integer. So 2 goes into result, and everything is beautiful. There is nothing wrong with that, right? So the result is going to be 2. Oh, 2. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication. If you use nothing but integers, the result is going to be an integer. What happens when you divide two integers. Well, sometimes you do get an integer, like in this case, but sometimes you don't. 
So what happens if I say something like 1 divided by 4? The answer to this is 0 0.25. But 0 0.25 is not an integer, right? So when I add, when I assign this result into result, what do you think is going to happen? How am I going to store 0 0.25 into result? Well, what it actually happens is that it just deletes the fractional part. And the term for that is it truncates the fractional part. It cuts it off. It literally just says from this little point on, you're gone. I don't, you know, I'm not going to even acknowledge that you're there. It gets deleted. You lose it. Now, what happens if I put a float here? Result 0, 0.0. Wait, wait, what? Result 0. What? Why do we get 0 0.000? I'm assigning a floating result. It should be 0 0.025, right? Like, what is, what is going on here? Well, again, the result comes out from the operation. And this is 1 the integer divided by 4, the integer. And the answer to that is 0 0.25 with the 0.25 being truncated, which means the answer is 0. So then the outcome of this, which we call integer division, is going to be 0. And 0 goes to result. So this case right here, it's quite a common, and I mean, it, it happens. And when you are trying to divide two integer numbers, you need to ensure that one, those integer division, that integer division will produce a whole number. And if it doesn't, you are going to lose the, the fractional part. Now, there are ways to convert an integer to a float manually. So like I said earlier, if, if we did something like this, let's say that we did something like this, 1 divided by 4.0. Now we have a float and an integer in one operation. So what happens? One gets converted to a float and now everything should be fine. So if I run this and I need to I need to stop doing that. Okay. And now if I run this, here it is. Result 0 0.25. Now it works because one of them is a float, so this gets promoted. Now before we wrap up, I talked about mixing a float and an integer. But what happens if we also want to mix in a boolean? So let me make another variable here and I'm going to call it is it true? And this is going to be true. And instead of division, just for simplicity, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to set five. I'm going to set five plus, you know, three point zero as we had earlier, right? And let me convert this into an int, just to show you what happens here. Now, instead of three point zero, let's say I say, "Is it true?" Right. So what happens if I add five in a true value? Let, let's just run this and let's see what happens. The result is 6, right? So here it is, result equals 6. So 5 plus true became 6, which means that the value of is it true in its numeric value is the number 1. Now, we generally have agreed that when we have any numeric value that is not 0, that indicates a true. And if we have the value 0, that indicates the false. Now, in the reverse, we have said, if it's true, that equals 1. And if it's false, that equals 0. So let's just say that I come here and I say, you know what? This is going to be 100. What do you think the answer of that is going to be? Do you think it's going to be 105? Well, I said that 100, it's a value that is not 0. Therefore, this will get converted to true and get assigned to, is it true? So now, is it true? is true. So now is it true has a numeric value of 1, which means 5 plus 1 should be 6. Let's try that. Let's run this. And here you go. Result equals 6, right? So is it true? It is indeed true, but it has a value of 1. And for you to believe me, let me put a 0 here, right? And this should be come out to what? Result is 5, right? So when you think of booleans, if it's a false, that equates to a 0. If it's a true, it equates to a 1. However, you can go and create a, a Boolean va value or create a Boolean variable and assign a value by simply giving it a numeric value. And any numeric value above 1 or 1 will make that true. And if it's a 0, it will make it false. Okay, so far so good. Now let's talk about one more thing. What about characters? So let's say I have char. And I say first letter, you know, the first letter of the alphabet, that's A. What happens if I come and I add that here? 
will I get five A? What's gonna happen? I mean, this is this is this is mathematics. How do we add just a? a? Do we treat it like a mathematical variable? Well, let's see. Let's run this. Let's see. Let's run this. Result one hundred two. Why one hundred two? I I don't understand this. A became let's say ninety seven. Ninety seven plus five is one hundred two. A has a value of one hundred two. Well, like I said earlier, every Every value at the end of the day gets converted to binary, to a sequence of zeros and ones. And right now, it just so happens that the value of the character A, the first letter of the alphabet, has a value of 97. Why is that? Well, we're going to talk about that on the next video. I think that that deserves an entire video on its own. So check that out. But anyways, what I want you to get out of this video is that you can indeed mix the data types and that when you mix a particular data type with another data type, you will promote one of the values in order to be able to do that numeric operation. So a Boolean will be promoted to an integer. An integer will be promoted to a float. And a character apparently also gets promoted to an integer. And if you mix a character with a float, well, the character will be promoted to an integer, which then will be promoted to a float. So you can mix these data types. And it's important where you assign that value. So if you assign a float to an integer, you will lose the fractional part. And it is also important to have in mind that if you are going to do division with integers, an integer division, that if there is a fractional part, that comes out of that division, that fractional part will be truncated, it will be lost, even if you assign that value into a float, because the result will come out from the integer division alone. So, make sure you pay attention to those things, because they're very important, alright? If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you are new to this channel, check out this video series, check out the channel, if you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.